Hey, hello. I want to plead that you watch this video till the end. If you don't watch till the end, you will misunderstand what I am talking about in this video. Thank you and God bless you. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus. How are you doing today? God bless you. All right. Um, but yesterday I brought you, was it yesterday, two days ago, I brought you the video of uh, uh, Daddy G.O. Uh, rendering an apology and, um, you know, recounting what he said about those who don't pay tithe, not making heaven at last. And to me, I said that was uh, humility for him to ac accept that he was wrong in that area. And I made it clear that he never said people shouldn't pay tithe, but he was uh, correcting what he said before because that actually is not true now there is a reaction after that people began to quote him out of context you know what what i do i do to the glory of god and to the best of my ability and knowledge i won't come here to misrepresent anybody i may make mistake but i'm honestly and sincerely doing what i'm doing so i said this in that, it's video. that. this is not to say that the man has said that tithe is no longer necessary that is not what he is saying he is saying that what he said about people who don't give tight going to hell, that that was wrong. I'm going to be apologizing for making a mistake, for saying that if you don't pay tight, you might not make it to heaven. I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's not in the Bible. What the Bible says is, he has peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see God. Now, Baba so Andy has actually watched some of the reactions on the internet and this is the full reaction, his full reaction to that, uh, you know, the reaction of people. He came out on the Holy Ghost night to address his own congregation and he touched a lot of things. Now, I'm intentionally uploading this full version of the video, uh, but then we're going to touch on other things. He also reacted uh, about his one of his pastors who i wouldn't say indirectly indirectly criticized him too me i knew that that was going to be an issue you know anyhow you look at it even though that it was a bold step for the young young pastor to have said that but baba has a different idea on that but we're going to discuss that in a different video now here is the full reaction of daddy Gio and his explanation and the things he said Thank you and God bless you. See you in the next video. Till then, from me to you, shalom. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the End Time Truth Television channel. We urge you to subscribe to the channel, activate the bell icon by selecting all so that the next time we upload a new video, you will be among the first persons to be notified by Google. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, shalom. Among the men of God in Nigeria today, I'm one of the oldest. So I made up my mind that I'm going to publicly ask for forgiveness for anything I in particular might have said wrong about Titan. So I told my children on Thursday night, I said, I said something. I said that if you don't pay your tithes, you won't go to heaven. I said, ah, that's not in the Bible. I said, I apologize. I said, what is in the Bible is that you are to follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see God. <laughs> Within an hour, it was already in the uh, internet that Pastor Adibu says, don't pay tight. I didn't say that. Fortunately, everything I said is on record. I went to offer what to tell my people. I said it is wrong to tie you down to 10% at a time when, by the grace of God, you should be far, far, far above 10%. I told them a story, not a new story, a story they have had several times, that several years ago, I went to Tulsa to attend Kenneth Higgins camp meeting. And uh, they wanted to take an offering for their Bible college. And one man came to the altar together with his wife and asked for permission to speak. And they gave him the microphone. And he said, I beg all of you who are here today, 
give very well because whatever all of you give that's what my wife and I alone we give and we're about 17,000 people uh, what what is this man saying he said anything all of you put together can give that's what my wife and I alone will give ha. so some people say this man is in trouble those who didn't want to give before now began to give at the end he said they should count everything they counted and it was 3.5 million dollars that was contributed they announced it and we thought hey you are the one who got yourself into trouble he took the microphone and said brethren is this all you can do ah. so i said this man knows something i don't know uh, as soon as the service ended i cornered him sir please i am from africa i came all the way from africa tell me your secret because you must know something that i don't know for you to do this kind of thing he said you want to know i said yes sir he said five years ago i started a business with 500 dollars and i told god this is your business you are my senior partner i will not insult you by giving you 10 percent i will give you 90 percent and i will make do with the remaining 10 percent so it's up to you to bless the business he said that was five years ago he said this year the turnover of that little company is 50 million dollars hey i said thank you very much and i came back home and from that day onward i began to increase the percentage i give to god i told those of my friends who are around this is what i learned over there today i am not close to 90 percent but i'm far from 10 percent i'm telling you the story i told my children on thursday so i said it is wrong to tie you down to 10 percent when god would have taken you to a higher percentage i said at the beginning when you were just born again 10 percent is okay is the minimum god expects from you but since then you should have grown that as you grow in the lord you should grow in praising him grow in winning souls grow in praying and grow in giving in other words i said the minimum for beginners is what god calls 10 percent so i told my young young ones i said so from now on begin to increase what you give to god <laughs> you know the only thing is they put on on the internet of all that thing that i said is that pastor adipo apologized and therefore people should no longer pay their tithes i said tithe should be minimum it should be for beginners what i didn't tell them then was <laughs> there was a woman mrs graham douglas of portacourt if you know those who are close to her she's she's going to be with the lord now you can check my story she got born again and came to me and said daddy i know how much i have wasted on parties before i got born again i am not going to be giving 10 percent i will be giving god at least 20 percent from now till i die she was in a very poor situation at that time she took that decision god looked down on her and began to bless her before she died she had become a board member of a very big bank because when you trade with god you will not suffer a loss it what the word of god says is when you sow generously you will reap bountifully that's the that's the bible so i just want to make it clear i didn't say don't pay your title what i said is that that should be your minimum that's what i said now to add to that one of my pastors went on the internet and he said he wanted to preach a sermon on why people should not pay tithes and i watched the sermon in fact when he was talking about preaching the sermon i saw the way he was adjusting his uh, jacket so i thought ah this man is ready for something serious so i, I was ready 
quickly got my pen and paper. I wanted to learn some heavy stuff. I was disappointed. Because the sermon he preached was just a repetition of what other people have been saying. Forgive me for saying so. Very, very shallow sermon. He said, we shouldn't pay tithe because Jesus didn't collect tithe. I said, ha. Jesus was not a parish pastor. He was a world evangelist. Is that correct? And the Bible says there were certain women. You can read it in Luke chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3. Who just gathered themselves together and they said, we will be the treasurers for Jesus Christ. We will maintain his uh, ministry. Now, I know of a bishop, it is of blessed memory now, who said, he too will gather some women together to be supporting his ministry. So wherever he went, he would take these five women along. I didn't ask whether they were married or not. But one day I cornered him. I said, brother, who are these women following you everywhere? Your wife will be at home. And these women will be following you everywhere. Oh, he said, they are angels of mercy. I said, sir, I hope they are not angels of sin. No. <laughs> Imagine somebody telling you that wherever Daddy Gio goes, he will ask Mommy Gio to stay at home and he will collect some five beautiful women and take them everywhere he goes and call them angels of mercy. Will I be able to stand before you and preach holiness again? And then the, the thing this pastor went on to say, the apostles never collected tithes. I said, that is true. The apostles were not parish pastors. The Bible says the people, all the Christians of the first time, sold everything they had and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, there's a very big problem. If somebody said that's the way we should be doing it now, number one, if they say that's the way we should be doing it, then I, <laughs> I should tell all of you to go and sell everything you have <laughs> and bring the money to Daddy Gio. Number two, it will mean we will say that anybody who wants to become a Christian must be ready to sell everything he has and bring the money to the church. You know the, the kind of problem that we create. But not only that, it was when the disciples, when the apostles were doing that, that politics first of all entered into the church when certain people of a particular tribe began to feed their members better than people who are not of their tribe if we are to follow the examples of the apostles eh? <laughs> then if the general verse is Yoruba the Igbos will suffer some hunger if the general verse is Igbo oh God have mercy on the outside members it can't work. It didn't work then. The first time Apostle Peter had to use his power to kill was when a husband and wife sold their land and didn't bring all the money. I'm sure you know the story. What's the name of the couple? Ananias and Sapphira. It's, if this thing didn't work then, how can it work now? So I didn't say don't pay your tithe. I did not say so. What I said is that should even be your minimum. That you should ask God for grace. That as you are growing the Lord, your percentage that you are giving into the work of his kingdom should be more than 10. That's what I said. That it is wrong for somebody to say you must not go beyond 10%. That would be wrong. i will be slowing you down. And so... I want to make that one abundantly clear. But I know this again, of course, <laughs> before the sun rises. This will be on the internet all over the world again. Let me add this one. I am begging all Christians all over the world, let this argument about tight come to an end. Let, 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 please, I, I know you, some of you know much more than I do. I know that uh, a pastor of mine knows much more than I do. But let's do it this way. Particularly you members. 
If your pastor says he doesn't want tight, don't leave his church. Home. If he says all he wants is offering, give him offering. But if your heart tells you that you should give God at least ten percent, find a church nearby where the pastor says, ah, we can collect tight. We will use it for the glory of God. And then give that pastor your tithe. So you don't quarrel with your pastor and you don't quarrel with God. Your conscience will be clear. I'm making that appeal. I'm making an appeal to all my brothers all over the world who believe that they know much more than I do. I agree. I've always told you I don't know much. I don't I never went to Bible school. The little I know, most of it the Holy Spirit taught me. If you know the truth much more than I do, the Bible says you are to speak the truth in love. You don't have to quarrel to tell the truth. Tell the world that the boy is wrong. No problem. I've told you um, probably the most stupid of all people. That's why <laughs> That's why God chose me to be a pastor anyway. The Bible says it. He chooses the foolish ones. So I admit that. And then there are people who, I know there are some of my children who will say, Daddy, if you talk like this, people will be insulting you. Years ago, when God took me to the school of humility, one of the things he revealed, and I shared it with those who were around then, is that the word humility and the word humus, you know, humus soil, black soil, they have the same root. That for you to say you are to want to really be humble, you must be ready to be like the soil. People walk on the soil. They smack his head with diggers. At times they defecate on the ground. Does he talk? Does he fight back? That's humility now. Lay on the floor. Let people tramp over you. But the Bible says, when you lay yourself on the floor like that, the God will lift you up. If you want dominion? You <laughs> we didn't talk about that during the lecture. You must be humble. So let them call me names. That's no problem. But just help me to pray that they will forgive me for everything I've said that is wrong. And let there be peace. Let all of us become united so that God can heal our land when we pray. Before I close, thank you for your attention. There's something, one more thing that I need to apologize about. This one doesn't concern many of those people outside. It concerns you. You know, I've always said, when I want to let you know how much I love my wife, I've always said that you can do whatever you like to me, but if you dare touch my wife, I will kill you. How many of you have had that one before? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I said that. Because the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> so um, I apologize. So in that case, what, what are you going to do? You are now opening the door for us to attack your wife. No, I've discovered a better prayer. <laughs> what is the better prayer? You want me to tell you? Uh, <laughs> I will only tell you in, in Proverbs. You know in Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, when Paul was on the way to Damascus, the Christians in Damascus, they didn't know it was coming. They didn't know trouble was coming. But God stopped them on the way. By the time he arrived with the, among the people that he was going to kill and take to prison, he has already become a brother. Uh, uh, so, so you get the story. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. So it is time to pray. Uh, just one more thing uh, before, <laughs> before I forget. If you are my son, 
whether a pastor or not a pastor and you discover that I am wrong because I have said it before the first thing you learn in advanced mathematics is that anybody can be wrong I'm sure I've told you that one before and I told my children on Thursday it is possible to be right and wrong at the same time and I gave them an illustration I said, I said as a scientist I know for years we taught that light travels in straight lines which is correct light never bend to take corners no it goes straight but later on we discovered that light does not travel as a rod it travels straight but not as a rod but in waves it goes galloping like the waves of the sea that's how light travels so initially we were right it travels in straight lines but we didn't know that it traveled in waves so it is possible to be right and wrong at the same time and i'm always ready to learn so if you as my child discovered something that i'm doing wrong or i'm saying wrong please come and tell me i won't chase you away i won't say who are you uh, i don't you know i'm the general overseer you little boy <laughs> and by now you should know that if i have any weakness by the grace of god pride is not one of them no not at all if you discover that I've, i'm doing something wrong or i've said something wrong come to me and explain to me quietly don't put it on the internet you know why a child that exposes the nakedness of his father is in serious trouble you know the story of noah now noah got drunk hmm? great man of god he got drunk inside his tent too. he didn't go to the bar he was in his house and he got drunk and he was on the floor naked and the youngest son came in and saw papa naked <laughs> and he, he ran out to go and tell the other two brothers hey come and look oh papa is drunk he's lying on the floor naked the elder brothers they said ah we will not even see the nakedness of our father so they took a piece of cloth and they walked in backwards so that they won't see the nakedness of their father and covered papa with cloth you know what followed when papa woke up don't expose the nakedness of your father it is dangerous so god will bless you all right uh, have you forgiven me for anything i've said wrong uh, if 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 at least you are forgiving me let me hear you shout hallelujah <laughs> in turn john verse 2 he said i wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health it is the will of god above all things that will prosper the only thing i need to warn you about is that when you prosper some people will be angry you need to understand that someone gave a bishop a car and some people got very very upset and that how can a bishop be riding a Rolls Royce <laughs> as if once you are a bishop you must die of hunger let me tell you my beloved children if you die poor they will blame you they will say after all these days of you serving God this is how you aim if you can't pay your rent they will say where is your God if all of a sudden you begin to ride a Rolls Royce they will attack you now so which of the two do you choose <laughs> they're going to attack you anyway whether you die of poverty or or you live in abundance how many of you prefer to live in abundance and i decree in the name that's above every other name very soon your neighbors will envy you And so what are the characteristics of those who who have dominion how do we know them 
from those who are just pretending. People who have dominion live debt free. They do everything possible not to borrow. They cut their coat according to the cloth they have. They don't go beyond their means to acquire anything. Why? Because the borrower is the slave of the lender. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7. Proverbs 22 verse 7. Don't borrow. Because once you borrow, you become a slave to the one you borrow from. Romans chapter 13 verse 8. Romans 13 verse 8 says, You should owe no man anything except love. Don't borrow. It's a terrible thing. People who have dominion, they don't owe anybody anything. Where I come from, when one big man is trying to make a younger to a small man, he will look at him and say, Aga, we know you have money, but you are not the one feeding me. That's another way of saying, you have no dominion over me. I don't owe you anything. Let that idea come deep into you. Don't borrow. Those who have dominion are always diligent people. You will not find a, 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 a lazy man, like one of my children said, who will ever become diligent. And because of those of you who are students who are here, let me remind you once again, a story I've told a couple of times. There was a time that all the Christian students in a particular university were always failing exams. And then one day when I visited them and, and we started discussing, they told me, um, we, we spent quality time worshipping, praising God. I said, in examination time? Eh, but it is written, the Holy Spirit, you, well, the Holy Spirit is supposed to help us pass. I said, what is written is that the Holy Spirit will remind you of what you have learned. What is the role of the Holy Spirit? I said, well, it's a comforter. If you fail, he will comfort you. And tell you, don't worry, where there's life, there is hope. You must study. You must work hard. And then, the Holy Spirit will remind you when the examination time comes. But let me hurry, because, like I said, we still have a lot to do. I want to add something that I'm not quite sure any of my children mentioned. And that is, how do I retain dominion? After I've become the one in charge, how do I remain the one in charge? Number one, you must have self-control. Self-control. Proverbs 16 verse 32 says, He that is slow to anger is greater than the mighty. He that rules his spirit, that controls himself, is greater than he that has captured the city. Have self-control. The one who already has dominion must also have self-control. And one of the major things you must control is your anger. Anger can destroy your dominion. I've told you the story of a brother called Brother Sam. At least the older ones among us will remember him. He was half educated. He couldn't speak English. And then he became born again. And became filled with the Holy Spirit. He was on fire for God. And all manners of miracles were happening through him. All manners. One day they invited him to a teacher training college to come and preach. He said, well, when I get there, I will tell them I can't speak English. So you have to get me an interpreter. But as they called him forward and he got there and he opened his mouth to say, I can't speak English. Suddenly, beautiful English began to flow out of his mouth. He himself didn't even know what he was saying. All he noticed was that after one hour, people were rushing forward, weeping to surrender their life to Jesus. I mean, this boy, at least we, we, we can count at least three people that he raised from the dead. 
Uh, there was a time the, his mother happened to be a leader among the occultists. And one day when the mother was not around, he burnt everything that the mother used for occultism. And the mother decided, it's better I kill this boy. And uh, the mother left home to go and tell the uh, members of the occultic society to send something to come and deal with this boy. He has shut the door at night. He was about to sleep. He knelt down, about to pray, when all of a sudden, through the locked door, a huge black dog came. I mean, without opening the door, coming towards Brother Sam. And Brother Sam shouted, Jesus! And something like a thunderbolt from heaven hit that dog, and the dog died on the spot. When the mother came the following morning, Brother Sam was burning the dog. But then Brother Sam became proud. Let's go for Bible study. Brother Sam will say, who's going to teach? Oh, Brother So and So will be teaching. How many people has he raised from the dead? It's a very sad story. But Brother Sam ended up in a lunatic asylum because God left him. I pray for all of you who are listening to me. The Almighty God will never leave you. For you to have dominion, you have to be connected to the one who controls all things, the one who is highest than all. When you know that as a child of God, you are already given authority over forces of darkness, you are already seated in the heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ, etc., etc., it is compulsory for you to maintain that contact as long as a piece of iron of electric iron is connected to the source the iron will keep on hot you pull it from the socket it will become cold so please take note of that if you feel that you've already arrived there's nobody like you you can perform miracles signs and wonders and you slow down and you get detached from the most high, you will soon discover that you are ordinary flesh. I pray for every one of us once again in the name that's above every other name. That thing that would draw you away from God will never happen to you. <laughs> <laughs>